Welcome back to the Ghost Key. I am Gray, and today we are going to host Helsingborg again. If you remember them, we had something against them. They did beat us, but for, before we get into all that, a couple things need to be said. First of all, um, if you've been noticing that this LP specifically has not been uploaded very much, if at all, really during the Christmas, you know, holiday period. That's because it just gotten pushed around, honestly. Um, you know, just because of the way the days were falling for my girlfriend and her days off and all that stuff and everything else, you know, we were kind of lax and just sitting around hanging out on her days off instead of doing all the recording that we should be doing and all that good stuff. And since I do this one solo, you know, yeah, I mean, I was just kind of, it just kind of got pushed around, and I had a bunch of episodes still stockpiled, and I think I've only got, like, as of right now, I think I've only got one more to post before this one actually goes to air. But anyway, um, I know nobody's really watching this all that much, if at all, but this is a labor of love, and I'm going to continue doing it because I enjoy it, so deal with it. Um, but anyhow, before we even start this match, we have some things to take a look at. Um... Mostly, it's it's about that time of the year, you know, uh, to, to go and put together a new formation. Um, although I myself didn't put this one together specifically, uh, I did go and find it on the internet. Um, there's, a, there's a football manager blog that I read, you know, every so often. And kind of just keep tabs on here and there. But, um... <clears throat> I did happen to, to, to find this strikerless formation, which is an idea I've kind of been toying around with. And as soon as I saw this formation and read a little bit about it, I immediately thought of this save file because this ACO Lou team has or needs some way to get all of its best players on the pitch, and this is the way to do it. Um, if you were watching before, you noticed that we were into, you know, switching Osei and Owusu out and all that good stuff pretty frequently. Um, same thing with like Harala and you know, we were having some not really bad selection issues, but some selection issues um, As you can see here, this really puts a lot of good players on the pitch a lot of our better players on the pitch Simultaneously and that's good. That's what we're looking for um, What else was there? Um, ah, um, and, and like I said since it's strikerless we didn't have a great wealth of of strikers to, to really put out there, but most of them are relatively, you know, versatile. Um, and that is something we're going to look to build the club around anyway. So I think our original 4-3-3 in this 4-1-2-3-0, actually this is, I'll probably change this, I'll probably call it what it really is here soon. But anyway, um, this being what it is, is probably going to get us, and now this is all get messed up, but this formation um actually we were going to change this here soon too i was going to change these to full backs and have them support just because I, i'm a little uncomfortable with the way our defending has been um in general uh but yeah that's pretty much it. it and i did well i haven't changed it on this one quite yet but i'll do that between the next episode i did make some changes to this 433 because like i said it was about that time where i was on my main galway file and i was just it, it came to a point where i just needed to restructure redo everything tinker with stuff just because the results weren't as good as i wanted them to be so you know then being the good coach that i am i kind of just took some time and tried some things out and worked on some stuff and you know we are where we are now um that's also how i like i said came to this i was just really just looking for a new formation and like i said i will likely post a link the to the to where you can get this download this tactic um as a whole which is what i did from the website and you'll take a look at it and it's pretty good um it's it's a really good blog too because the, the whole blog is just run by a couple guys and they're devoted to entirely nothing but strikerless football so this is a very interesting and very fun um tactic to use i did try it out already a couple times um with pretty good success um i tried it out on my um uh what you want to call it i tried it out on one of my uh lesser clubs on my galway file i actually have an extra coach and he's in the icelandic premier division right now and i talent level isn't very high there this team is way better than that one 
but anyway I tried it there and it had very nice very nice results even for a really bad club bad players um, so I'm really excited to see what it does with players that are pretty much our team that's pretty much set to play in this way um, there are some things that are not or like not prime and perfect like you know a lot of our players aren't super aggressive or shouldn't be anyway I don't know okay I guess I guess yeah like Hanan and you know you need that in Murato and all you, you need aggressiveness to kind of uh, get these sorts of things working personally I've never had a ton of aggressive players I don't know why I noticed that on my goal with United file and I was like wait a minute this is weird but anyway it is what it is and um you know it should it should work pretty well um on all, in all honesty i i expect to have very good results um hopefully we can string together like another six game unbeaten streak honestly um that'd be nice and also one thing is like with this the the formations i have like i said i've tried this formation out already the formations that it does pretty well against are ones like this that we're seeing today with no defensive midfielder um Mostly because we're going to be moving, and you'll likely see this right off the gate. We're going to be moving this back four, especially these two center backs, all over the damn place because of the way the passing is with this thing. So, like I said, you'll you'll see that right from the get go. Like, like um, we do have some selection issues as to who's going to start it right back because we. Um, oh, uh, I guess I should also mention before I really get into this, the formation does come with these guys as complete wing backs, just like you used to see on our four three three. Um, I changed them to full backs because the the here's the issue: if they're going up and with a new formation to begin with, um, if they're going up, they're going to be flying up the pitch like so to a, to join in the attack as complete wing backs. That means if Harala happens or Owusu, somebody happens to turn the ball over, he's going to be all the way up here up the pitch and the ball is going to be going back in behind him. Um, from a positional sense, as a supporting fullback as they are right here, they're going to pretty much hover in this area right here all the way up until we get to the final third. When we get to the final third, then they'll start pushing towards the byline and then we'll be able to dump the ball off to him, which is what I want because that means obviously we're down there and chances are, unless they hit us on the break, we got a lot of room to try and make that up. So that is that, so to speak. Um and yeah, and and that's why I, I went and changed that because I just I was a little afraid of of having to deal with that myself, honestly. I you know, I like I said that stability and defense has been something of an issue on this file for a while now. And so like I said, I'll just we may end up changing it to complete wing backs at some point, but for now it's gonna stay the way it is, and that's really that. Um, now, because I haven't played this honestly in forever, I gotta okay. I was say I gotta remember who can play <laughs> where. We're gonna try Arins today, and we are gonna move Heighten in, move Heighten in over for Hinkala and Granholm. What should we do with him? Uh, Nisukangas, you know, he's not really that good. In fact, he has almost no no potential, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> he's, ooh, Arends can play the other side too, so, okay, that, that works out well. Um, Kayla, yeah, and that's something too. We got um, um, Matias Oyala coming back as well, and this gives us a chance to put Michaela, Ola, Oyala, all sorts of these guys, you know, in and out. And Remisaho will give him, you know, a, a chance to play up there or in the middle of the park somewhere, you know. Um, but like I said, well, we'll get into it once we get into. It. I think we're gonna have to keep keep with Granholm here, and just just go with it. So that's that. Like I said, we should do well here. Um, it is a home match, which is nice, nice, nice home match. Um, you probably will see a really disjointed performance here. Um, we probably, um, oh yeah, there we go. We we may end up losing this honestly, just because we just switched to a new formation and all that good stuff. But we'll see. I mean, like I said, this formation is is 
got its shit put together. So um, it, it should do pretty well. Now they're not pressing as much. They're supposed to press a lot and be really, really quick. Kind of like how our rinse just closed them down right there. And see now you see sort of where we kind of find ways to press and turn the ball over in, in the middle of the park. That's one of the things that this formation is supposed to be really aggressive, really closing down. And you'll see, like, it seems like all the players are kind of just all bunched together here, but because of the way the passing is set up as well, to, to sh pass short and retain possession and do so quickly, yeah, you'll see, like, Orin's right up there sporting, and now we're going to release Harala up there, who's coming in from midfield, and look at the numbers we've got up front. You know, we had four players up front running that goal, which is nice. Um, and I do like how this formation plays in the middle of the park a lot. Um... I don't know, do I really want to... We're just going to kind of stay the course with the fouls and stuff right now. Um, that's one thing, too, I noticed. This formation seems to do pretty well. You just got to give them time to start working on it and see how we just moved. Yeah, passing is going to be an issue there. But seeing there, there's ground home in in support there coming up to, to, to you know, yeah, support the ball. And uh, let's see. And that's, well, that's what you want right there is there we go. Let's say, yeah, I mean, it's... You'll see good results. Like I said, I will put a link in the description for everybody if you're playing FM14. Or even if you're playing FM15, I know you can um, at least go in and just take a look at all the the player roles and everything like that. And just copy all that over to your own. Um, which I didn't do because apparently this is an FM14 tactic. But I don't know if tactics are are able to convert or anything like that. I've, I've never really ran into that. I haven't even gotten FM4 15 yet. I probably will here soon. But um, I'm still, like I said, I'm still attached to the save files here, and I probably will not, probably will not change. Let me see, look at that. I mean, it's, ooh, that's a bad pass, but Renz is able to help clean it up. And that's one of the reasons, too, right there, where you just saw him, his positioning. Because he was where he was on the pitch, he was able to help cover that mistake. That's why I like having the supporting fullbacks a little bit more, at least in the early stages, because, yeah, now he's an extra outlet to help, you know, retain possession and not necessarily cavaliering down the side in attack. Personally, like I said, personally, I like that a little bit more. I just I just do. Um, like I said, I'd, I've changed that actually on my, on my, look at that, Hananen. I actually changed that on my um, my 4-3-3 formation as well to give it, once again, more stability back there. Um, one good thing is this formation and our old 4-3-3, which is going to be now called a 4-1-2-2-1, which is basically what it is. What people, well, most people will call it probably. I just, for simple purposes, I just call it a 4-3-3 because I wanted to. But anyway, um, what... What you'll see with that now is that's that's plays a much much different style than this. This is much more close quartered and plays a much quicker passing game. That other formation will look to spread. Obviously, it's more spread out formation and it will spread the ball out more and much more longer passes and stuff like that. I did change it a little bit to attack down the center a little bit more, play a little bit more narrower, um, mostly because. I like I like the wide players attacking the box, not attacking the byline. That's just me. That's what, like I said, what I think we have our, our fullbacks for. And look at that pass, gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. And like I said, this formation is built for this team that we have. The the players that we have are perfect for this. I mean, just all around. You know, like I said, we had strength in the middle of the park in, in terms of talent. You know, like I said, with Osei Harala. You know, Hanan and Muratonal probably, like I said, won't get into, won't get into it much. But that Enganch uh, position that he's playing there in the middle is more of a, um, more of a facilitator role. He actually, as he's standing up here, typically he'll end up back here a little bit, creating this weird little kind of star formation with with the four guys, a little a box, you know, with four corners of players sitting there. I was surprised that's not a card right there, but. And that's something too. You do notice these these guys that are back. This is this is one of our attackers because of the way that these guys aren't actually strikers and aren't all the way up here. You know they're they're much more back here. We close the ball off. We give the ball much much less room to move. And that was a weird little video cut right there, wasn't it? That was awkward. But anyhow, 
mm, and take a drink there. Just freaking talking and talking and talking. Um, defensively, it is a pretty solid formation because usually if you'll notice the possession up here as well, we're going to get a good, good chunk of the possession. Um, this is about what it was. I mean, honestly, when I was, like I said, playing with my Grotta club in Iceland and playing against the FH, the best club in Iceland, you know, we, we actually were able to get, you know, 60% of the, the possession as well. Of course, they were much, much quicker and much better than our, our team. So, therefore, and that's something, too. That's one of the reasons why I really like that supporting fullback is he's able to come in and cut that pass off that he just did back there. But, anyhow, you know, you'll, you'll notice a good chunk of possession going our way. Even though other teams may be able to get off a ton of shots, our possession will be what helps us maintain some sort of defensive shape and dignity, really. But look at that. Oh, gorgeous passing. Just gorgeous stuff right there. I mean, it's... Like I said, it's it's such a fun formation to use because you can really, really see how the players, you know, interact very, very well. And, and like I said, I have to say that the people who, who made this formation, um, which I'm not really stealing, but, you know, that I'm using... I. I you know, that's that's the nature of sports. I don't have any qualms or quarrels about stuff like that. I mean, in case you're going you know, to sit here and, like, get all uppity and be like, oh, you're unoriginal and you didn't freaking make your own shit, you're not good enough, blah, 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 blah. That's the nature of sports. I mean, you, you see things, you take other people's ideas and adapt them and use them. And I've always been a big supporter of whatever puts, A, your best players in a chance to win and succeed and, you know, uh, I don't even know where I was going with that with the second one. That's really all there is to it. I mean, you got to do whatever you got to do to put your best players in a chance to succeed. And if you can put your best players on the pitch with a certain formation that plays a certain way that somebody else came up with, you know, I mean, there's there's very few new ideas in sports. I mean, that's just the way it is. Jesus, look at that. Four goals, unless that one gets called out. No, yep. Oh, and, that's, and that's something, too. I mean, even those midfielders, really, we have an attacking five. I mean, that was our two midfielders here in the middle of the park who have scored so far. Oh, actually, I take that back. No, Harala's the other one. I thought I had Osei back there. But, and that's something, too. When I when I decided to go with this, this formation for this team, it was kind of a no-brainer because we had all five of those players up front. Onal, well, minus Onal because he can, he's really a striker. But still, we can use him, and that's something good, too. We didn't really have but, like, one striker that's probably going to be left out in the cold. Even then... I have used players because, like I said, with my Icelandic club, that's not very good. I got to use what I got, and I don't have much for resources. So you got to really sit there and use the players that are not going to be primed for certain positions, and it still works decent. Um, one thing I do suggest, though, having up front, at least, are people who can finish. Otherwise, you're going to be having midfielders just hit the goalkeeper all day long. Like I said, my, my Icelandic club that I'm using it a lot with, not a very good team. Not a whole lot of players who can finish, so therefore you're going to have to struggle. I mean, you're going to have to create a shit ton of chances to score. Um, whereas this one, I mean, we've had three clear-cut chances and four goals. I mean, that says something right there. You know, it's, like I said, it's going to create chances. And even with the fullbacks playing a supporting role instead of being complete wing backs and attacking as much as they should, you know, you're going to be fine. And like I said, look at that right there. Arin's in possession. He just finds open space right there. Not necessarily cavaliering up there too much and puts in a cross. But it's, like I said, it this, this, will, this will work well for this club. It really will. And um, like I said, judging by the results against bigger clubs, better clubs, I'm really, really encouraged as to what I see. I mean, I really think think we have something now that can really that we can really build on i am going to put nermela out there for onal i think that's a good position for nermela to be in just my opinion i mean well, it is what it is but um and we are going to be smart and substitute gran home nope undo that last one <laughs> We're gonna put. Uh, we are gonna sit ground home for the rest of this game just to help try and keep him a little bit, a little, little, little fresh, just a little, and let Hinkula take over there in the middle. Um, that should be fine, right? I'm pretty sure Ryson and yeah, okay. I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure Ryson can play over there on that right hand side as well. But um, you know, like I said, I mean, now you look at it and we had a four nil lead. 
I mean, how can you how can you not be happy with that? You know. Um, but it, like I said, at first sight, you you look at it, and uh, it really seems like it just puts a shit ton of players all in the same spot, which you don't necessarily want. You want some sort of spacing, you know. But like I said, because of the way the passing is and the movement and the support, um, it it does pretty well. Um, like I said, just because of all the angles it creates, it creates a lot of really easy angles to to pass into. And you've seen that on a number of occasions with a couple of those goals already. You've seen just the angles there. You know, as long as people run at goal, there's going to be good angles there for people to, to run on the balls and then subsequently get a good shot on goal. And then you can still cross, too. That's something that's nice. Oh, boy. On and in. You're all alone there. And you also see how... Um, and this is one thing, too, why I also was messing with our, our 4-3-3 to play more narrow. You also see here how players are closer together in the box for like those those loose balls like that. You know, if something gets knocked around or you know someone makes a quick pass, you know, you have a player who's in scoring position all the time. That's something that is very much appreciated. And that was really the thing that really won me over with this formation is how close everyone is together in the box. And, and how much support there is in the box for one another when you when you have the ball. But uh, like I said, defending. Let's see, still uh, that's still mostly because we have crap defenders. But you know, it's it is what it is. I suppose that theoretically shouldn't happen because of where you're chasing the ball down. But you should be trapping it up here instead of letting it get down you know, behind the box, or underneath, below, whatever you want to call it, Ooh. but, um, they shouldn't be able to make a, you know, make a four goal run here, shouldn't, at least with this formation, that's, like I said, that's something too, we have been relinquishing a little too much of the possession though, 58%, and that's something too, I try not to mess with, um, with the coaching instructions, with the, you know, passing and all that stuff too much, because, the possession's nice, in my honest opinion, and I kind of value that over being more um, direct right now. At least with this formation, because, like I said, it, it helps with the defending. Um, so, it, it, well, it, the more time you have the ball, the more, you know, players aren't going to, you know, have time to attack your box. It's just obvious, right? I mean, it just makes sense. That's something, too. I mean, you see Osei, the, the defending from all the players is, is very much appreciated. That's something I do really, really like. Like I said, your back four gets a little exposed sometimes, like it was there a second ago, but that's more that's more down to the other team being pretty good, um, or at least making a good play down there. Um, oops. Knocking the shit out of everything here with the keyboard. But like I said, I mean, just, yeah, this is nice angles right there because, oh, Jesus. Too much indecision with the ball, too. And now you see, yeah, Usu and then Harala there, you know, coming back and helping out. And then, you know, Usu's in a good spot to, to really collect that, even when there's an attempted clearance. But, and that's something, too. I mean, as, as I've said, as this goes along, um... Because of the way I build players, you know, or build players, build teams, and and get players, I value a lot of versatility. So therefore, a formation like this one plus the other one that we're using should work pretty well. Um, if we need to change our styles, if we need to go more direct, we can just switch over to our, you know, four one two two one, and you know, play more long ball and stuff like that. Because basically, the formation is pretty much the same minus those attacking three up front and that's where most of the versatility is going to be needed and that's a nice pass from Nermela. oh just couldn't get there in time and now as i say once oh my god why are so many so many blue shirts in one spot but it, there it does this this ugh, this formation does cause a lot of panic up front um a lot of panic up front oh boy and see that, that like that right there with all those players in the box. You saw that little small cross pass. Of course, Hinkle isn't going to be the best finisher there, but you do see where it gives you it. It gives us a lot of options and spaces people pretty well within the box. 
And that's something that's very, very nice. You know, quite often, like I was saying, with the 4 3 3 formation, you have like a striker and maybe one other person and, you know, stuff like that. I have been once again tinkering it. Oh, this is bad. Jesus. <sighs> once again, uh, our defending is just piss poor. Uh, this is, like I said, kind of to be expected. I mean, this isn't the worst thing in the world to deal with because it is a brand new formation and they don't quite understand the defending right now that's involved with it um once again this is just a brand new team in general you know so you're gonna have you're gonna have uh what i'm gonna call that was a soft goal that was just bad defending you know inability to deal with the ball and as we as we get better as a club that will change and that's one thing that's going to be kind of tough for me to do is sit here because I, I want to get to that point really quick and it's going to be hard for me to sit here and just kind of not really mull through but take it slow and as I'm recording this LP and, and doing it slowly instead of just sitting here and playing like 15 games a day like I do on my Galway file and get to a point where I'm satisfied with the way things are going because I wanted to fix a fucking problem but you know like I said it is what it is I guess I mean you know it's not the worst it's not the worst problem to have Although I just hate crappy defending like that. God, that irritates the hell out of me. It really does. And one thing I have noticed though is now we, because of the way we're we're spa well not really because of the way we're not spacing, but because of the way we're able to put certain players on the pitch, we are gonna have to shuffle things around now. And basically, what's gonna have to happen is, for instance, if we were to put Hagblom back there, and uh, you know, at central defender, we'd have to basically move everyone else back, starting from the top. You know, like uh, Hananen would probably have to come in and play in the middle, and then we'd have to put like Michaela or somebody out else or Nermela, you know, out there, and have either of them, you know, play in the middle. You know, so it's like I said, it's not terrible. Oh my God, just play the fucking Jesus, play defense, Hinkle. Don't fucking stand around trying to catch them off sides. If he's offsides, he's offsides. I hate shit like that. I hate that so much. But once again, oh my god. I'm gonna mount the four fucking goal comeback. Jesus fucking Christ. Well, so much for the four goal lead, right? And it's just, that's just been, uh. Yeah, well, like I said, once again, we got such, such good players up front. And we have absolutely no quality at the back. That's. As I said before, that seems to be a running theme in FM14. I don't understand why. There's so, so many low quality defenders. I mean, like I said, if you look at the quality of players we got on this team, and then you look at our defenders, it's just, it's a, it's shocking how how much falls off. And now, yeah, now they're gonna fucking score here. I think they're gonna tie this up. The way this is going, Christ, Tarala. Really? Jesus. You know, of all fucking places. And and that's something too. I mean, like, you, you look at our, our team ratings here. I mean, this is very representative of what the hell is going on. You know? I mean, this is this is how, once again, like I said, piss poor. That. You know, I was just saying, is he going to do this fucking thing that I was raging out on last night? Walk out of bounds with the ball like that? I hate that shit so much. I hate that shit. I hate it. Oh, Christ, Ryzen, really? Ugh. Ugh. Oh, come on. See, and that's, that's something that's nice, too. You saw who was coming all the way back there. That's Those are basically our three strikers up front that are coming back and helping defend. Of course, they didn't do anything with it there. They just kind of helped usher it along so they weren't able to just turn around. and. But... You know this is good though. This does give me this does give me cause and reason to frickin' yell at him, which you know how I like doing that. Oh come on, he's got the yeah. There we go. So he's got the he's got the support on the on the wing there. But you now, like I said, I mean, you just look at the look at the play in the middle of the park and look out or look you know, front and middle of the park. Then you look at our our defending scores here. I mean, just. Uh, cannot wait to get good defenders. That's all I'm fucking saying, man. Ooh. 
Although, um, I have been looking at, uh, oh god, what do you want to call it? Um, I have been doing, uh, some scouting and stuff as to how I'm going to build this team and where to hit, uh, hit the transfer market, really. There has been a few places that I've been looking at already. Um, as I've said before, Eastern European countries tend to come, uh, tend to come at relatively low prices, as well as there seems to be a good contingent, and you may see this, uh, depending on what spawns, obviously, you know, and what's what's generated throughout the game, we were likely to have a good bunch of Jamaican players. Here's why: they come dirt fucking cheap, absolutely dirt cheap. Um, and number two, they are actually their their potential and stuff, their skill level is pretty much where we want it to be for this. For this team, um, they are going to be pretty good for us, in, in all honesty. Um, so, like I said, don't be surprised if you start seeing a bunch of those types of players show up. Um, personally, I would prefer the Eastern European ones because those tend to come, those tend to have a little bit more potential. These tend to have better players come out of there for some reason. Although, like I said, Jamaican players are going to most likely be what you're going to see a lot of because it comes super cheap and they're going to be a nice upgrade and have pretty good potential not great but good potential for for this club at least especially for you know the first the first few seasons anyway you know that that will be something like i said you'll see probably you'll probably see those players if if i'm able to get some you know hang around for you know four or five seasons before we move them on or before we need to move them on but anyway that is that is our um that's our match as f fucking terrible as that was in the second half yeah well i don't fucking know thinking yeah okay yeah i was to say i thought i did the wrong yeah i don't seem confused and demotivated at this point i really don't give a shit because yeah that's absolutely unacceptable three goals i mean fucking seriously three goals yeah like i said our possession in the first half was about 60 percent and it fell off to about 54 not really what we want. Oh, FC Haka Drew, that's awesome. And PK35, who we play next, by the way. Moves up to second. Nice. Well, that's good, that's good. That gives us two points. We are two points clear at the top right now, and that goal's against. Hopefully we can... Hopefully we can stop the bleeding. That's something, I mean, we're what? One, all right. PK35 is number one. Yippo, two. We're third in the league defensively in goals against. Okay, that's not terrible, but... We could be sitting at, you know, nine goals right now against instead of fucking 12. But, um, good thing is, though, we have plenty of time in between this game and the next to rest up and hopefully put together a bit more of a better, bit of a better defensive performance. Because, like I said, that, the three goal comeback is a bit of a one off. You, you probably won't see that very often. And quite honestly, I will not put up with that shit. Um,. Because we have got to get some better defenders. It's just all there is to it. But like I said, um, that should come. Probably the next transfer window will probably be a good time to go after some players, I think. Um, as long as we have a little bit of dough, anyway. Um, usually it's pretty hard when you first get going to get players from out of country. That's just the way it is. They want you, I think the game was meant to help you kind of grow your own players more. But eh, when you start off... It, it makes starting off much, much more difficult in FM14 because we can't really import any talent that's going to get us kind of a jump start. But anyhow, if you've made it this far on YouTube, you know what to do. Thanks a lot for watching, and remember, the ghost key is the only place where pants are optional. <laughs>